Um, work out how I want it. But no. Game said no. Prepare for battle. Prepare to fight! Toggle impact blue. Toggle wild blood red. Right. Wild blood defending four moles, a long sword, two short swords, three. No, four pikes. Sorry, pikes. Pole axes. Apologies, let's try not to burp. Two muskets, a short bow, and a pike. The attacking team, Impact Esports. They've got two moles, couple of well, a handful of short swords, a glaive, three pole axes, four pole axes even again. A spear, interest. Two muskets, a jewel blade, and Let's go Wild Doggo. <laughs> right, so let's see how they do this. And normally the defending team doesn't actually defend A, but I've just seen that they've got four sets of Katas out, so it looks like they might actually go for full on Sally. So again, the banned units on this match are Outriders from Impact and Shenji from Wild Blood. Um, having four Katas at the beginning, I'll say that if they pull back to, to where B and C is, that could make sense. I think sallying out with four cavalry won't make sense. They've got a lot of uh, anti-cav as well on the attacking team, so even if they would sally out, they'd be they'd struggle, I think, to, to, to beat them. Right, let's see how this goes down. I don't think I've casted any of the matches with these two teams as well, so it'd be nice to see how these guys play. Right, let's try all of it. Oh. Oh. And again, oh, and again, hate it when it's shout out Coffee Field Gaming for the intro video as well that I showed before. He's the, the guy that made that. Very nice. Let's get smashing. Oh yeah, Night Weaver. So, Wild Blood didn't sally out, which is good. See? I suppose. <laughs> I don't think many teams will sell the out. Blame Elias did it yesterday. They were obviously the first match. A lot of teams would have seen that now. Um, the attackers start very close to the gate though, so it's a very risky. It is a very risky move on this map to actually sally out. And when when uh, Blame Elias did it, they like literally split half this way and half that way. Um, put pressure on the resupply, and then like the guys that come this way jumped onto the artillery and started shooting them in the back. Actually worked out fairly well for them. Um, like I said, I'm pretty sure Slabs didn't get A either. They nearly did, but I think they managed to just get stopped there. Because they stopped these two siege towers and the, the ram getting in. It was only this one tower that hit the wall. And um, if anybody's wondering why I'm not talking about what's going on now and explaining a battle from yesterday, it's because nothing's actually happening, apart from people firing cannons and siege towers moving. <laughs> and uh, because they only had the one access point to the wall, when they'd come up here, they basically could get hit from like two or three sides. Like if they pushed here, they could get hit from three sides. Um, and they just... They did a lot of work. They did good pushes. Uh, they used Trebs well. It's just Blame Elias just reacted really well to it. And then when they had like people dying and respawning, it just, it just worked out for them really well. Might get rid of the middle tower here. Is that just with the standard out of the really they're getting rid of that as well? Interesting. Looks like Wild Blood's going to pull back already though. Good shout. It makes no sense to stay up there and most of the time and defend A and B. Normally, the, de the defensive posture is between B and C. So you defend C, resupply, and B. Uh, you have like a like a, maybe a five man on B, and then like a five man on the stairs, maybe, and then like everybody else just in the middle, just rotating. Um, try and match rotations from the attacking team where you can, obviously, so you're not getting like pounded 15 against five on the staircase, say. But having a good good presence on the, the back side of this staircase is actually a really good shout for defenders. Because this whole back staircase here is complete, completely treb safe. You might get one at, a cheeky one at the bottom, but the rest of it's basically all completely, you're immune to trebs there. Obviously fighting on the B points completely treb safe as well. And being close to this 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 wall, wall here is uh, very good for the defenders. We'll see how this goes down. So they are going to have Flamers, and they are going to have Falconetis. Falconetis aren't like massive on this map, but they can definitely do work. So the attackers have got uh, Falconetis up, they have Flamers up, they've got a good few sets of Berserkers, and they've got Claymores as well. I wonder if they 
changing out to that? Or are they going to keep that? Because that is not... Apart from like Flames and Fort Abracchio, but Fort Abracchio have to be braced. They've got no anti-cav, really. And if they push down this staircase, which it looks like they might do, the defenders have got so many sets of cataphracts, though. Plus their own Flames, two sets of them, that stopping this could actually be fairly easy. If they see it quick enough that they're all going to come over here and like stop them on the stairs today. Obviously, the cataphracts won't be able to join in the fight, but we'll see. So, Raiden's actually been clever here. He's pushed down the, the side here to see where everything is, and you can see there's nothing here. So, now the rest of Wildblood's rotating over to the, the sea side of the map. Speculative Treb coming in there, probably to try and get rid of the Namcams. The Namcams have been moved. This is going to be a massive Zerg on this staircase. At least we can zoom in a little bit further. I don't have to look or worry about people flanking him. You're not seeing it. Let's see how this goes down. So, a lot of the guys with the cataphracts are pulling away from the sea. Interesting. They've got two IPGs, the attackers do, and they've got four Brachio. Oh, they're going to they're gonna see that Treb, though. Shield guy seeing the Treb. The Namcams are sat still. Oh, no, I think they've, 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 they've dodged all of that. Okay. There's a five-man on C. If they get pushed, the rest of the guys here have to move very quickly. These Noggers is, needs to move. He's, he's not going to be able to do anything there. And I think it was uh, Raiden over there needs to pull back as well. Like, they should be able to see that their whole team's here now. The guy's just disconnected. We've been in the match for too long, though, so there probably won't be a restart. They're just going to gonna have to hope that he gets back in in time. So the defenders have got some flames here doing work. Two of the enemy heroes are just being jump behind them, so they're going to be gone very quickly. Big brawl going on in the front here. Falconet is from the attackers. Akalian going down. Flames as well, so they're going to struggle here. Good treb. Cavalry coming from multiple sides. Oh, those cavalry could get hit by that trip now, though. They're putting pressure upon the C point, though. The attackers are. Hero-wise, it's very even. Two apiece lost. Four trebs already been used. The attackers have got the advantage so far. So Impact Esports doing a fairly decisive push here. It looks like they're actually going to be at a cap C. They've got enough pressure on the stairs here to stop reinforcements coming through. They've got three heroes advantage. Obviously, the respawn is going to be coming in through from the seaside now. They've got cavalry coming as well, so they could actually do some damage here. What units have the blues got? Uh, Berserkers are not going to do well against charging cataphract. The defenders might be able to clear this up. Oh, I think there's too many heroes. I think there's too many heroes. They've lost the supply as well. It looks like they're about to lose C. Atomic TBM. I don't know. Resupply coming in now. I don't know if they're going to regret putting so much on C now. They've lost. They've definitely lost C. They should be pulling back. Yeah, they're pulling back. Right, so there's still 10 trebs left. They've lost C. They probably shouldn't be defending B anymore. No, they pulled back from B as well. Um, I think a misplay there from Wildblood was... They still had, they had a guy up on the stairs here, and they had a guy in the back here, and they should have been able to see that like there was 15 guys on this on this staircase and should have pulled both of them into the fight as well and they should have maybe tried fighting at the bottom of the stairs so trebs couldn't do anything but should have could have would have didn't very nice attack though from impact esports nice and decisive they got their um imperial pike walks off at the right times good use of trebs even like here zoning units out try to catch the fight while it's moving rotations good uh supporting their their own specialist units jumping on the enemy specialist units as soon as they see them. Especially on the flamers that were on C in the corner here. Like two guys just jumping straight on them is always what you need to see. Like the most important job almost. <laughs> While you're playing in something like this or even on territory or getting rid of artillery and getting rid of um, specialists is what needs to happen. Obviously there is no artillery to be placed on this so you don't have to worry about that. You have to get rid of specialists. So, Wild Blood have lost 283 units. The attackers, Impact Esports, have lost 243. While we're waiting for a reset, I'm going to see if there's what the hero difference. So, 13 to 5, or 14 to 5, I suppose somebody fell off the wall or something. That Treb, I don't think that Treb does anything. I think it's it'll be lucky if they hit. I think normally, the wall should block most of it. And Ooh, okay, I'll shut up. Maybe it does hit. Slightly less than half hit the unit. Actually, fairly decent there. Right, so here comes the big push now from Impact these spots. The problem the defenders have here, if they defend all on the point, they can get trebbed and absolutely annihilated. If they spread out too far and have too far to go, 
it makes it too easy for the attackers to push across the point and just basically stop them getting through with just the amount of units they can place down. These Falconettes from the defenders could do work though. If these are allowed to fire, these are going to absolutely destroy the attackers there on this lane. And the attackers are doing nothing against them. Although they've been moved. Why, are they, why did they move them there? Interesting. What are the attackers? I suppose the attackers... Oh, that's defenders. What am I on about? Flames and Falcon is. Where are the attackers, Falcon is? Oh, here. Here they are. There's only a couple of them left, though. Four guys. That's going to be a decent trip. Yeah, and there's a lot more uh, Falcon from the defenders. Sorry for jumping around. I was trying to see where the specialist units were. Good trip. Ooh, that just did a lot of work on the javelin. Landed right in the middle of that javelin sergeant unit. A couple of guys in the back here putting on pressure. That Haivan, Haivan Suki here putting on pressure on the resupply, just stopping him getting new units and being a pain. Obviously, he's Pike, so he's got some um, decent cavalry. He's died though. Got some decent uh, cavalry attacks, so he can obviously dismount people with his right click and stuff. So far, Wildblood though, doing a fairly decent job and not getting absolutely pounded by all of the trebs. Um, I just saw like one poor model get absolutely smashed in the face by one though. I think that was um, Tercios as well. Yeah, that was a Tercio unit. So they're getting Alchemists out to probably heal like Tercios and any other specialist. They've seen a trap coming in again. Modal moving straight out the way. Unit wise, the attackers do have more, although they have lost. The defenders have more, even though they have um, they have more units left, even though they've lost. Them. So words are hard and all that. Right. So here come impact these spots. They're gathering for another attack. They got a couple of guys in the background here with like cavalry and berserkers. So the attackers, yeah, one set of cataphracts and it looks like at least one set of berserkers back there. Main push coming up from the front here. They've smoked at the front here. I think that smoke, though, was from the defenders. Interesting. Right, so the fight's coming on now. Palace Guard's moving in. Claymore's moving in. Dilladar's moving in. Berserkers pushing up now as well. Same as Fort Brachio. There are IPGs here to charge out. Cataphract charge coming in as well from the defenders. That was a very, very nice charge. IPG walks going off now from both sides. They're kind of just cancelling each other out though. It looks like the attackers have got more units on point though. Like by a long way. Hero wise it's very even. I'm going to get a little bit more of an overview. Some cavalry did try charging through the back. But this Fort Brachio's there and Flames stopping them. The attackers now have control of the point though. This blob over here of the defenders needs to start pushing the, the, the cap. Fort Brachio just being moved out of their position. Ooh Falcon is shooting them though from where? The Falcon is in this blob here. They are. There's a couple of Falcon it is there. So Berserkers are trying to kill the Madao, but I don't know if they're going to be able to do it. A couple of Moles and a Polax from the Defenders have got on point. Here comes an IPG walk though. They're going to be able to clear fairly nicely here. Well, clear. They'll, they'll stun lock stuff. Another IPG walk coming in. Grey hair, Cataphracts as well. The Defenders might be able to push this back now, but they've only got eight heroes up and the attackers have got 14. So this is going to be a hard ass. Cataphracts from the attackers coming in from the right side as we're looking at it. Straight through the middle. The Cataphracts from the Defenders have been stopped. Looks like Armiga's coming through now. They're slightly quicker. But nah, the impact these spots are just absolutely flooding the cap now. It's only a matter of time, I think, until, until they've got this. Unit-wise, it's still very even, but like the hero disparity is just huge, man. Impact just have not been losing heroes, and Wildblood have lost loads. So you can only die three times as well, so there's going to be heroes of uh, Wildblood that just are not getting back into the fight. And because obviously there's so much pressure on the point, they have to jump over and basically just, just get in the middle of it. And look at all of the heroes and all of the units here. Very well played. Impact eSports. Very well played. I honestly can't see them winning. No way. There goes the last couple of uh, heroes. And it's GG. First round done. 7 minutes 30 still left on the ticker. Right, we're going to miss in chat. Man, I wish there was more content like this. CB could have an amazing pro play. The defensive flame is on C. Got no value at all, sad. Yeah, Ice and Shield, they got... As soon as uh, the attack is seen and they got jumped straight on top of. Um, that's always a problem. Not, like, they should have put them a bit closer to the front line. And they should have been... Basically, everybody knows if you've got flamers on your team, you need to protect them. 
just like everybody knows when you're attacking and you see flamers, or like you're in an engagement and the enemy team have flamers, you need to jump on top of them. Um, but as you saw, like when the two enemy heroes run round to get rid of them, there was there was like a, a, a guy from the defenders that reacted to it, and he's not going to be able to do anything on his own. So rough times, man. Can't believe Falco's not banned on this map. Um, I was surprised as well that they banned Outriders, but three of the matches tonight have banned Outriders, and um, there's only one match tonight that's banned Falconetti's, and that's the last one: Kebabs versus Love and Devotion. Interesting. Very very strange. Right, attacking home is terrible on this map. Defending home's harder. Terrible for the attackers. I don't know, man. Most of the time when you see it and the attackers get to the end point, they can normally uh, do fairly well on it. Yeah. Splitting B and C is the easiest part of this map. Never struggled there. Yeah, yeah. But defending holding B and C is normally the, the better way to do it. Right, anyway, let's go MVPs. So, attacking eSports. Attacking eSports. Impact eSports were attacking. Sunga Space was MVP with 3, 0, and 15. Look at how many guys he had with 0 deaths, man. Couple of guy on 2 towards the end. Handful on 5. Uh, on 5 on 1. So, like, 5 guys with 1 death, and then the rest of them absolutely 0. So, doing massive work there. So, Sunga Space killed Forsyth for Rothenoy. Huge play. Like, on tournaments, like, getting rid of these specialists is always what you need to be doing. So second place was 5 0 and 15, 61 units. But look at the assists though. They've got so many people with a high amount of assists. Even like the last player, 14 assists, man. Doing absolute work. Um, so well done these players. So Sung of Space, Silver Kassap, and Sphinx. Top three for the attacking team. Samurai, Kek coming in fourth with 103 unit kills. Let's have a look at the defenders. So Cecilia, again, look at that. Free Falcon, it is in free Sifroth. Huge work being done there um it's just rough man they got they got outplayed i don't know there's no way of way to say it <laughs> but zero three two and 89 so they had one two three four five six seven eight nine nine players that basically weren't allowed to respawn at the map anyway um that must have happened before like as their last push was going off they maybe would have had like a guy been a guy or two down beforehand as well i wasn't really paying on the attention if they had like, their full amount of heroes out for them what you're gonna do? If you look at the the engagements, see the impact basically on all of them. Like a little spike here where the defenders did a little bit better, but otherwise it was all impact. So GG. First round down. So impact have definitely secured one point for a draw. Um, and we'll see we'll see how the the tables are turned when Wild Blood attacking impact are on the defense.